I think uh, we can slowly start, Vilur. Yeah, I, I can see a lot of people have joined, so let's not waste their time. Uh, otherwise, they have to wait for a lot of minutes. So people will join continuously, right? And before we start, many thanks to everyone and especially Billur for giving your time, right? And I appreciate everyone in last time also, the last session we had with sort of with with uh, with subscription billing model re refer deferral. So that was also a very successful session. A lot of people have a lot of questions. So that was a great session. Uh, I hope this will be a great session as well because budget is an area where a lot of you know newcomers or <laughs> new learners or experienced people also have not been able to work on this model because not not all the companies you know in regions uh, they don't use budget but this is a very powerful functionality what i believe so uh, many thanks Villur, for taking this initiative and uh, uh, agree to uh, you know find some time from your busy schedule so great appreciate it and before we start also i would like to congratulate billur for uh, becoming or have been awarded by microsoft as the most valuable professional this year i hope billur you continue to uh, you know contribute to the community in future as well best of luck thank you ramit thank you so much thank you yeah okay let me share my screen can you see me and hear me Yes, yes. Perfect. Can you see my screen? Hi, my yeah. Perfect. OK, let's start then. Today we are going to go over the budget, um, but we have separated into two. Uh, this one will be mostly concentrating on the ledger budget. And then we will have another, hopefully in August, we are still planning on that one about the controls and how we can use our budgets operationally. So before we start, let me just introduce myself. Uh, you may know me or not, but uh, I have been an MCP on Dynamics 365 FNO uh, since 2004. I have been in more than 40 plus projects and very passionate on Dynamics FNO. So this is why I am probably an MVP. MCT and a certified solution architect. So today's agenda will be to understand the concept of budget activities uh, and we will go over the budget planning and the ledger budgets in the end. The tools for budget actually is not only the ledger budget, but we have ledger budget, project budget, uh, workforce budget, fixed asset budget, demand forecast, and inventory budget as well. These are also can be used for doing the uh, budget planning, uh, can be used. But today, as I mentioned before, we will only focus on the ledger budget. So ledger budget, uh, when we say you can use two things, it can be either a basic budgeting or you can create the budget plans. You don't have to use the budget plans every time. You can go with the basic budget if you don't need to plan and just upload budget directly to the system or want users to um, fill out their budgets in the system without any workflows or very simple workflows. Um, but budget planning uh, process is to meet the organization's policies, procedures, requirements for budget preparation, right? And you can use budget planning uh, to perform the following tasks, like to associate budget planning process with budget cycles, ledgers, and organization, organization hierarchies. Also, you can analyze and update budget plans by using multiple scenarios, you can automatically route uh, the budget plans together with uh, worksheets, justifications, attachments, reviews and approvals. And you can also consolidate multiple budget plans from a lower level of the organization into a single parent budget or uh, from a single budget plan at a higher level of organization 
and allocate the budget uh, to lower levels of the organization. For example, let's go here and see what we can do. Here you can see the budget plan from the budgeting module, budget plans, right? When we create a budget plans in this very example, uh, the budget plans are created according to the departments, right? Uh, budget plan for legal, budget plan for human resources, plan for IT department, plan for operations, plan for sales and marketing, for example. And all are uh, assigned to different workflows and have different responsibility centers and uh, budget plan preparers. As I mentioned, to create a budget, you don't have to use the plan, but if you want to uh, create plans according like to departments and they have their own workflows uh, and different organizational controls are needed, you can use the budget plans. So budget uh, planning actually has four key terms. Uh, budget plans, scenarios, stages, and workflows. Budget plans contain the budget data for a budget cycle. You can have multiple budget plans that are used for various purposes. For example, um, you can use budget plans to create budget amounts for different organizational units. Also, you can use them to comparison and make informed decisions. Budget plan scenarios define categories of data for the budget plans. You can define uh, budget plan scenarios to support monetary clauses or other unit of measures. What do I mean? For example, monetary budget uh, is like the department budget, department requests, and etc. Uh, with telling non-budget, uh, non-monetary, uh, like unit of measure, is that, for example, support calls, budgeted support calls, or budgeted uh, FTE count, right? Full-time equivalent count, we can say. And we have budget planning stages. Uh, you can have as much as stages that you want to. Uh, budget planning stages define the steps that a budget plan follows are ar arranged in a budget planning workflow, right? And we have the workflows, of course, and budget planning workflows consist of uh, and define budget planning stages. So you can say in which stages, which workflows need to be used uh, for us to be able to manage our budget planning. And in the end, the control. When the budget planning ends uh, and everything is OK and the workflow has been finished, of course, if you set up, you can have the controls in the system, which we will go into details uh, in another meeting. But to give a brief information, uh, after budgets have been approved in the system, you can use the budget plans to generate budget register entries to record the expenditure budget for an organization. Also, budget control supports the management of an organization's financial resources through the chart of accounts, workflows, user groups, source documents, and journals, which is configurable calculation of available funds, budget cycles, and thresholds. And also, expenditures can be recorded by using main account and financial dimensions, which we will see how we are going to uh, set up our ledger budget. So uh, as we mentioned, as I mentioned, we can generate budget plans from general ledger transactions, our real uh, transactions. I will show you how to do so. From fixed assets, forecast positions, project forecasts, supply forecasts, demand forecasts, Budget, uh, budget register entries, which is the uh, ledger budget that we have created before, and other budget plans. So let's go to the system and see a little bit of how we can do so. So we go to budgeting, 
and then periodic. And here you can see all of them here on where you can create your budget plan from. For example, if you want to create your budget plan from a general ledger transaction, then you click on here and see the details which you need to select. First, you can select your action and depending to your action, uh, system will change uh, the filters that you have given. You can create a new budget plan. You can replace the existing budget plan scenario or you can update the existing budget plan scenario and append new data. Here, let us select create a new budget plan. You can select aggregated total by fiscal year, fiscal period or day on how you want to see your uh, transfer your balances from general ledger. And you can filter the source. When I go with filter, standard filter screen will open and we can here select by main account categories, live general journal account entry. OK. And then we can also uh select here which fiscal year that we are going to use for example i want to copy data from fiscal year 2016 i can filter the from period and uh, to period you can include closing transactions budget plan description revenue summary account times that are that you want to use and then in the target, if you want to see historical, yes or no, which budget uh, planning process that you want to apply this uh, transactions to, budget plan names, scenarios, responsibility centers, and etc. that you can select in here. And also you can have generation rules like factor, minimum, running rule. So here factor means that, for example, you think that your overheads are going to rise 10% next year when you are budgeting, then you can give the uh, factor as 1.10. So what it will do is to multiply the transactions with 1.10 and then uh, send the data to budget plan. The minimum is that if you do not want to see the transactions uh, like, for example, minimum than 100 uh, US dollars, you can give the minimum as 100. And we have the rounding rules. Like, for example, if you do not want to see the cents uh, when you are trying to generate uh, rules, then you can have the rounding rule as one. So you will not be seeing the cents, right? So when you say OK, then system will uh take this data directly to your budget plan that you are selected this is also applicable as we said for um fixed assets supply uh demand and etc so sorry to interrupting uh we have a hand raised from ali so you would you like to take the question now or after the session how would you like to take the questions Let's say, let's see after the session, please. Right? OK. 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 No and if we do not have time, uh, we can collect the questions and I can answer uh, via email, right? right? So all the questions will be answered. No worries on that one. Maybe Ali, you can put your question in the chat if possible so that you don't forget the question. Yes, of course. Why I cannot cancel just a second. Let's connect again. Also, as I mentioned, you can apply the same filters when you want to uh, create from one budget plan for the another budget plan, right? All the screens are almost the same with the difference of the filtering. Criteria. Why I cannot cancel this one.
Okay, let's fill them out and retry. Okay, let's just wait. I can type. Yes, it has lots of controls. So this is a good thing, right? But it's not good that I cannot cancel. All right, let's continue. So let me select one other for us. For example, if you want to generate budget from from uh, previous budget, for example. Or maybe you have uh, done a budget and you have to create another budget so you can create multiple budgets for that year as well. So you can control the differences in between, right? Here you can say create a new budget plan, replace again and update. You can select the submodel. You can give the filtering. You can select the budget code and the entry, uh, entry number, which you want to copy or create from. And then the budget planning process as well and can have factors, minimum and rounding rules as well. So when you go with uh, them all, you will be able to create your transactions accordingly. Let's select here are uh, submodels, which submodel that we are going to use, which budget code we are going to uh, create transaction from, and which budget. Let's select them all, and it will probably let us to cancel. Okay, let's say generate, or let's say cancel. All right. And then when our budget plans are fine and finalized, what we do is from the budgeting module is to send uh, all these budget plans to budget register entries. Actually, er even uh, we are doing the budget plans or uh, basic budgeting, all transactions will be in the end seen in the budget register entries. So when you go with the generate budget uh, register entry, you select the budgeting planning process, the document number, scenario, budget code, budget models, and then all data will be uh, directly copied to the uh, general budget entries. So uh, how we set up uh, our budget to see the general ledger uh, budget entries. First, we set up the workflows. OK, from here, uh, budgeting, setup, basic budgeting, budgeting workflows. Here are different workflows that you can select. Uh, for uh, budget register entry, you can use the workflow of budget register entry review. In this case, when you upload your budget, then it will be uh, continue with a workflow to be finalized. And also you can have for your budget plans and also uh, budget account entry workflows, budget uh, general budget reservation workflows and commitment uh, workflows also can be used to be set up in the workflow. Also, we have to set up our dimensions. So here dimensions are very critical because a system will use these dimensions or budgeting. It doesn't require 
uh, in the budgeting module to use all the dimensions that you use in your general ledger transactions. For example, if you want to create a budget just per cost center, you can do it. Uh, if you want to create by main account, business unit, department and cost center, you can do it. Uh, if you do not want to, for example, create your uh, budget per project, as you can see in this form, uh, you can just uh, not add them as a budget dimension. So this dimension will not be required when you are creating your budget lines. But what is important here is that, for example, in the analysis, uh, you do not put item um, as a dimension because you can report your expenses from the SCM modules on uh, for expenses, for example, how, how much that you spent uh, from the module based. But when you go to the budget and you would like to report without using the demand module, the expenses from general ledger, and uh, you will not be able to do so without creating an item dimension. So this is very critical uh, from the first phase, how you want to do the setup uh, before you go to budget. So for, for defining, deciding the dimensions from the general ledger, you have to think of how you want to see it in the uh, budget as well. Right. And then uh, we have the budget models. Let's go with the budget models. There are two things that you have to set up. One of them is the budget models and the other one is the budget codes. So let's go to the budget models. Budget models is uh, created on how you want to report your budget. As you can see in this form, it's defined as yearly budgets. But for example, if you want to create them by um, department detail, you can also create sub models from here and assign directly in the original budget. So you can report uh, per uh, department and let them use them and you can stop the budgets, for example, for that department separately. Once the budget is stopped from here, no transactions can be created for that budget anymore but you can remove the stopped from yes to no and then any time you want to according to your security privileges. Also, uh, you can here decide which uh, budget models to be added to your cash flow forecasts. So in standard cash flow forecasts, uh, when this uh, including cash flow forecast is set to yes, you will be able to see them uh, in your cash flow for the transactions. How I use uh, budgeting for cash flow is that sometimes there are foreseen amounts for some periods. Uh, we think that will be in our system like using a credit, uh, using a bank loan and etc. Then I create a new budget model just for cash flow purposes, fill out the amount and set here to include the cash flow forecasts, right? This is actually a little bit of workaround for me. You may or may not use it, but I want to mention that one. And also we have the budget codes. And budget codes is used for how you want to uh, create that budget uh, model. Uh, in a way, how you use that budget model. For example, we have budget types in here. There is a revision budget, uh, carry uh, carry forward budget, transfer, fixed asset, original budget, project and transfer. So you can have your original budget and in time there may be a need or per revision. Right. So rather than using the same model uh, or creating a new model for that one, you can post transactions with budget type revision. So in this case, you will be able to report which are them are revision and what is the amount before the revision. So this is uh, why we use the budget codes uh, while creating the um, budget. 
Also, you can have reason codes on them. For example, I'm creating this revision because of inflation, because of, I don't know, we did something wrong <laughs> and etc. cetera. Uh, and also you can assign workflows. For example, original budget can have a different workflow and the revision may need and require another workflow. Also, you can divide, for example, you may have more than one revision, uh, which has different uh, workflows as well. So you can all define how you want to process your budget codes from here. Budget models, budget codes. And then we come to budget register entries. So in the end, everything depends on the budget register entries and the old controls uh, in the system uh, for, for example, expenditures are being done in here. So let's continue with the budget register entries. Here we have budget register entries. You can fill out the budget manually, but I would advise to use, of course, the Excel functionality of the system to create your own budgets, right? We have an entry number. This is a number sequence that's coming from the system that you do in the setups. So I say new. I select the default date. This default date will be automatically placed in the lines. So, uh, but um, you you can just define one thing, one, one, one date, and then change it on the lines, right? So you do not require to set up a daily, for example, uh, budget in here. Uh, if you want to do it monthly, for example, uh, select the end of the date uh, on the lines and the end of the month. Here, we have selected a uh, budget model. For example, it's uh, the fiscal year budget of 2016. It's the original. I'm going to create an original budget. I can select a reason code here. I may have defined on the budget code or I can select directly in here. Once I start operating on that one, this in use will be set to yes and uh, in use by user will be created. Now my budget register entry status is draft because uh, I have not uh, selected any workflow and I have not finalized it. So if there is a workflow, the workflow will be active and you can send it to be controlled and then the status will be changed. If not, status will be dropped and you can just update the balances in the end. So let's say add line. Here, as you can see, the default date is automatically arising in the lines, but you can change it. You select the account structure. So this is very important uh, in the budgeting on how to define your uh, account structures. This is also very important. For example, here, if you have too many account structures, then it will be a pain for user to know and select the uh, correct account structure in the end if he or she is going to use the Excel uh, uploads, right? Because he, he or she needs to know which account is assigned to which account structure. So you have to know and understand the need and define your account structures clearly for the users as well. So we are going to use a PNL. Then when we go to dimension values, as you can see, uh, it gives me the account, the accounts that is in that account structure. Let's say product sales, let's say home, sales marketing and cost center. OK, then here we fill out the amount. Amount type is either revenue and expense for reporting purposes. And you can have the currency. You may have different currencies. I will show you one example how we manage it. And then you, if you want to, you can have a detailed comment for that line as well. Right uh, here, this is the transactional currency. So we see the currency in here. So let me add. 
the uh, accounting currency. This actually do not have the reporting currency, right? Let's add these two amount and transactional currency amount, right? So let me change the currency to euros, right? As you can see, now the amount will be in transactional currency. So this is being calculated from the ledger parameters. On ledger, you may remember that we are selecting the budget uh, exchange rate. So according to budget exchange rate, this amount will automatically uh, update it. And what you can do on the lines is that for example, you fill this line and you have to enter a reference and you don't want to do it manually and you are not using Excel. For to Excel, for to use Excel here, you can use Excel functionality in standard. So I'm not going to show it, but because it's very uh, simple, the detail data is automatically being uh, driven. But here, but you can enter your recurrence, right? You can see an interval, for example, you want interval in one day and you want to expression date to be 2016 in days. You can say it's in days, months, years. For example, if you want to Recure by months, you can select one by month and the expiration date as the year end. And when you say create, system will create all the lines for you. And you can allocate a transaction uh, in allocation rules. You can define your allocation rules and for each line you can allocate between periods. For example, here we can, you can select the select uh, sales curve and say allocate. System will automatically then allocate according to your selection. Also, um, you can allocate to dimension, right? You can also give allocation rules for the budget to be allocated. Uh, so you can define one account and you can give your allocation rules so you don't have to fill out every data per dimension manually. Here, advertising, business unit, other expenses, rent and utilities. It depends on how you want to allocate a transaction into different uh, rules. Um, when you fill all these out, also what you can do is that you can transfer balances from your general ledger transactions. You know, we can transfer data from general ledger transactions to budget plan, then budget plan to register entries. But here also you can transfer balances directly from general ledger transactions to your budget. So let's go for transfer balances. Here you will be able to select fiscal year. OK, you can fill the start and the end date. You can uh, enter the quantity. For example, uh, you want to change the date one year. So this means that all the data with the fiscal year 2016 will have the year of 2017, right? And then you can enter a description that you want to see. For example, balances uh, are transferred from ledger transactions. So you will know which one that you fill manually and which are being transferred directly. You can have factor, minimum, round off. And if it's a credit, that the type, account, amount type to be a revenue, if you would like to select. And also, you can give the filters. For example, if you just want to filter out the expense accounts, you can here select the uh, date, account entry accounts from here on which you would like to transfer or which dimensions. For example, if you want to just filter your marketing 
and marketing will have the factor of 1.10, but for example, I don't know, a transport will have 1.20, you can run more than once with giving different filters and different factors while creating your budgets. All right. When everything is all right, uh, you may send it to workflow, right? Uh, and then uh, all the workflow process will be finalized according to your definitions. And when all the workflow approvals are done, you can update budget balances. But once you update budget balances, you can never delete that budget again. Uh, for the corrections, what you have to do is that uh, create, a, uh, create a new uh, budget model and do the corrections on your new budget model. So it's very critical that you need to know after updating the budget balance, there is no return on that one. And reports. Uh, we have several reports in the system that you can use. For example, actual versus budget and actual versus budget by period. Let's run actual versus budget. You will be able to select business unit, budget model, and the other information. Here uh, in reporting, you can say, for example, before completing the budget, if you want to see the report on draft as well, you can say all draft or completed parameters. You can uh, fill out the start date and the end date. And when you say apply parameters, you will be able to see the report by uh, financial dimension set that you have selected. Here, as you can see, the dimension value 001, home with account type uh, expense, you will able to see the revised budget, actual amount, the variances, and the percentages. Also, we have another report, and this is budget register entries by dimension set. Let's select a dimension set for us. Let's say this time, let's use cost center. Okay. And then uh, here we can select the register entry status, uh, all or just completed ones. You don't want to see the drafts or you want to add the drafts as well. If you want to select your budget type, like original transfer, revision, accumbrance, and et cetera, you may select as well. And then when you say apply parameters, as you can see, according to your dimensions and your budget, you will be able to see that details as expense, revenue, uh, and the details. And budget account entries, actually this is almost the same as that we see from the uh, budget uh, entries, but this is more of a grid shape. So budget, let's select budget model and we can select all the other information and say apply parameters. Here, as you can see, we will be able to see the budget register entries in a grid shape with uh, budget number, transaction date, entry number. Entry number is a number sequence that for that budget, dimension values, descriptions and etc. But I prefer to use financial reports, honestly speaking. Uh, there are default financial reports in the system, uh, but you can create your own reports. And I mainly create my own reports when um, using the financial reports. So what you can do is that to see the budgets on monthly, uh, when you create your columns, uh, you can use the percentages from actual versus budget, uh, monthly, in three months, quarterly, um, half a year. So uh, you can use the financial reports. And when you say generate, system will ask you for the date that you want to run. And then you can see here your budget, uh, budgets and etc. Here, let me go into detail. 
Here, as you can see, per account, original budget, revised budget, actuals, variance, variance percent, and person budget. How you can set up is that you can create from new, or you can edit the ones that has been given uh, by the system. System will open you the management reporter tool. And here, as you can see, we have two lines, added two lines, original and revised. Here, the column type will be FD, which means that amounts from financial dimensions. But here, from the book code, we select rather than actual, we select uh, our budget, which budget that we want to report from. Here, as you can see, you will be able to see all of the budgets that you have defined in the system. It can be a fiscal year budget, it can be a fiscal year budget price or fiscal year budget quantity. As we mentioned before, we can report the quantities as well. And then you will just fill out the fiscal year period and etc. as standard management reporter. And as attribute filters, we can give out the filters that we want to use on this budget. For example, on column C, we just want to see the original budget. So here, attribute will be the budget type from original budget to original budget. And for D, it will be original budget plus revision and then transfer. And here on the attributes, you will be able to uh, give filters according to the budget control categories, cycle, model, plan name, plan priority, scenario, workflow status, planning stages, and etc. So it all depends on you. If you want to, for example, give uh, just not like the period, uh, that column as that budget, you can say you can create monthly columns by using management reporter functionality. And as an advice, uh, feature management uh, workspace, uh, you can turn on budget planning query optimization for performance feature under budgeting. So in this case, if there's too many transactions that you need to deal on, uh, you can just open this feature for performance issues. Also, you can create budgets due to total accounts. You may have too many accounts in the general ledger, but you don't want to create a budget according to all of these accounts. So in this case, in chart of accounts, you can create total accounts with the type of total. And then budget uh, for the budgets, you can use that total accounts. For example, for travel expenses, you just want to see it in one line as travel expense on your budget, then you can use a total account. But in detail, in general ledger, you want to see that like accommodation, um, flight, uh, taxi, and etc. in your uh, general ledger. So you can create the total accounts defined in budget total accounts and control them together in your budgets. Also, you can enable the new uh, HTML editor control in the feature management workspace to use more current editor. This is another functional that has been uh, recently added. So you can use that uh, functionality as well. And it's advised to use Excel functionality effectively. So you can upload your um, budgets directly from the Excel. So um, to be careful, you cannot delete a budget once finalized, as I mentioned before. So in this case, you have to create another budget uh, model, a budget, uh, budget code and then do your corrections. For example, if you post it 1000 for an account and you want to correct it like it should be like 10,000, then you need to post additional 9000 to your budget as well. Or what you can do is that you can say minus 1000, additional 10,000 as well, so that you can track which is uh, are the corrections and you can use reason codes for that corrections so you can report them 
directly and then include and exclude in your reports. Uh, as I've shown you, the budget entries are dependent on your account structures. So when you're trying to set up your account structures, it's very important to think of the budget as well uh, when you are setting up the general ledger. Uh, because uh, users may have some problems during the budget register entries while they are very manual or if they are going to um, use from Excel. Or for example, um, they are from departments, uh, like for example, sales uh, users that do not know the accounts, the GL accounts, it's very important for them to be able to select the correct account structures and of course for the dimensions you should think of how you want to report from the budget as well as i have seen say uh, before in the in this talk um, about the um how you are going to report the item expenses and etc it's very critical uh, selection that you have to make and also it's important what you selected on ledger as budget exchange rate as i have shown you you can uh, create uh, in different currencies and then report them. Or you can just create in one currency and do the reporting from management reporter by changing um, your currencies as well. So it's a management reporter functionality, which is financial reports now, uh, but you can manage there as well. It depends how you want to implement and how your uh, customer wants it to see. So for uh, this presentation, I've used the supportive documents of Microsoft Learn uh, for budgeting overview. You can go into details and read all the pages uh, to understand the concepts better if you would like to. So thank you for participating. So now if we have time, we can go over the questions that you have. Ramit, I think you are in mute. Sorry, uh, I was in mute. Thanks so much, Bilur, for your session. It has been nice, uh, very informative session, I would say. I personally have one, two questions, but let others ask the questions, then maybe we will proceed. If you have any questions. Anyone? I think I did a good job. There's no questions. <laughs> uh, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Myself Mutukuma here. Hello. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, information. Actually, I wanted to make it sure that uh, for the multiple entities, we can do this. Multiple entities. Sorry? Multiple entity. More than one entity is. We need to compare the bit. It's per legal entity, unfortunately. There is no functionality to create uh, them in one. So for each entity, you have create different budgets. Uh, but you can, of course, report them uh, via management reporter in a group way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. I think Muzaffar. Uh, since this multiple entity came up, I had one uh, question on it. I never explored it. So when we, you know, we have the budget register entry data entity and Excel add-in, there we can see a legal entity column. So have you ever tried it? Whether we can upload budget? It's fine that it is part legal entity. It will work. But can we upload budget in one go for one legal entities? Yes, you can, but in this case that you have different, um, uh, let me say, legal entities that you have to select. Uploading is fine, uh, so it's about the code and etc. But the thing is that um, you cannot collaborate um, into one when you see from the legal entity. Yeah, so I will tell one use cases of what we have faced very recently. See, uh, we have implemented or we are implementing a budget in a, a company. 
their mis is central but they have nine ten legal entities they do not the mis team do not want to import uh, you know create multiple data and import what they wanted they wanted to import in one go uh, uh -huh. by adding the legal entity so that was I the use case that uh, i have not tried that one actually uh, uh but i don't think that it can be applicable i believe because yeah, it's a all legal all entity and a registry number so yeah i'm not so sure about that but um you may create a new uh, import procedure probably yeah in the system so by that maybe but it, it depends on the management uh uh, data ma data management. Yeah. I think Muzaffar is going to ask, right? I see his yeah, hand. I will. Hi. I work for a public entity and we face every year the problem with the budget carry forward. Especially with the purchase orders, we do the carry forward in the next mm -hmm. year. When we try to get the report, okay, in the management report, we managed to get the separate report again. Current year budget, carry forward budget, then current year purchase orders, and last year carry forward purchase orders. But we were not able to say, segregate the expenses. Did you face similar issue with the government organizations? And even if we carry forward the budget from the purchase order, if we make any changes, then the link for the carry forward breaks. And yes, then, uh, I've seen a couple of things. I, I have not faced that kind of thing before, but I've seen that uh, in the forums in community. Uh, user um, consultants are asking about that, but I have no idea about the detail, unfortunately. Maybe you can ask in the forums and maybe reply because I have never seen that kind of an issue before in the carry forward. Yeah, but we are facing this and we have intense pressure from the client. As of now, there is no solution. We are still looking for the. Uh, have, have you asked Microsoft? Is there a reply from them? No reply. We raised the ticket even multiple times. No one was able to answer. But we oh. raised the ticket regarding other issues. Then they can quickly resolve it. I see. No, I have not faced that kind of issue yet. Maybe, so, Mujapur, can you forward the ticket number to us, me and Billur with details? Yes, I also I have I will forward the link uh, which I have created online. Mm. It yeah, it really help because we work in I mean I work in UAE and uh, we are having major challenge for this. I see. Let's let's check together. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I think we have another hand from Smith. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, just I have one business scenario. Just want to know if it uh, can be done with budgeting. Uh, uh, I know if it can be mapped with a total account or no. So let's say if we have a uh, expense as a traveling expense and then uh, traveling expense is a total account. And then I have uh, uh, different accounts which are mapped to it. Uh, let's say conveyance expense or cab expense. So now. Uh, uh, that the budget their client wants to see is on uh, total account that is traveling expense the allocation is not fixed uh, if my budget for traveling is let's say 100 then conveyance can be 80 20 can be cab expense or either way so they want to con they control just on the total account of uh, traveling can it be done that way yes that that is the case the control will be on the total account not by account then. Okay, so yeah. uh, then in the uh, budget uh, 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 ledger accounts where we define the uh, account, so there we want we will have to select the total account, right? The control in which. For the budget, yes, but while you are posting the transactions, of course not. When yeah, you have yeah, real transactions, it will be the real accounts that you want to use. Correct, correct. OK, OK, got it. along with along with this uh, uh, Sumit, I would like to also add see uh, when you when you ask about the total accounts, yes, it's possible. Uh, what you need to do, you need to create a budget group for it 
then it will work if you just create a register entry it will maybe not it will it may not work you need to create a budget group with this combination then it will work okay okay got it thanks thank you thank you I have more two questions. Can I ask? Yes, Ramit, with your permission, can I ask two questions? More two questions? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, it's your program. Uh, okay, now, uh, now one thing we are facing is that the budget has been allocated, let's say 100,000, but this includes the VAT. And we have 5% VAT. But during the expense, we need to limit the 5%. To be out, I mean, it should not be consumed. Under thousand is the budget released, I don't know, five percent should not be consumed because it is allocated for the bad expenses. So, how to deal with this? As far as I know, that it will consume the VAT. Uh, it will just check. Uh, it will not check the VAT. As far as I know, uh, it's it's by standard. So, so we, we have a, yeah, but we have a requirement is not added, it, but I can double check uh, if there is some other scenario, especially for India or somewhere else. This for the JCC requirement. Sorry. Mm. OK, so let's uh, is that is it the in same thing, something that you are facing the issue or you are just asking? No, it's a real time requirement. Actually, the thing is that let's say 100,000 is a term is the budget. And they don't want to consume out completely 100,000 because as a government, they want, they also pay 5% VAT, VAT. So you want, you want to add also the VAT or not? It should have some reservation so that like 95% should only should get consumed and 5% should be in the reservation by default. Mm. I need to check that. Not sure. For so example, I have the budget allocated for my department hundred thousand. I should not able to request the PR of hundred thousand. It should stop at ninety five percent. I see. Let me check that one. And second thing, uh, because it's our government organization, they are working on the yearly budget request. Each department need to fulfill the budget requirements. So uh, I know there's a budget planning process. So each department, can they do the pro request the budget? From a normal point of view, not like an accountant, but a normal manager. OK. Can, can I repeat the questions, can you please? A department manager wants to create a budget? Budget request. Budget As request. a budget contributor. OK. Can do. Uh, OK, we will talk detail in the uh, control part in our next session, but yes, they can. You can just uh, create budget control uh, groups and you can say that it's OK that uh, this user or this user group uh, can have more than uh, request uh, that than budgeted in the system. So it will allow th those users to be able to uh, create the expenses. Mm. So uh, you can just give the permission and uh, permit the others uh, who do, do not have permissions to continue with that expense. Also, there can be set up the workflows for the controls and say that, OK, uh, I'm out of this, out of my budget, and this should be approved for my manager, for example. Got it. Thank you so much. In, in the next session, I will uh, invite my government officials. Hope they will I see time. that you will have too many questions for the next one. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Because this is the first session happened for the budget. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have another hand raised. So in the interest of time, maybe we will take, uh, we'll cut short. We will take, uh, you know, we'll have another five or 10 minutes. If the questions are there, then we'll wrap up. So yeah, go ahead. Ask the questions. Abdul. Hi, Abdul. 
Nej, men jag har en question. Can we make any alert me uh, uh, alert which will show on the purchase order that uh, budget needed to meet at all? If we set the budget on purchasing any category, can we create a new? Uh, no, there should be an alert that the budget, the remaining budget is uh, any kind of alert we can show over there and uh, at a procurement size. Ramit, uh, can you please rephrase? Because I also did not get it clearly. Can you repeat once again, Abdul, if you don't mind? My question is, we have a budget on some categories, purchasing categories. Once uh, I have set this budget for a specific category while creating purchase order for a specific I should now, what is the uh, remaining budget we can I purchase further or not? What my point? Okay, I think the question is just correct me if I'm wrong. The question is, you have purchase categories and you have defined the category, uh, the budget in the category level. And if you have yeah. consumed the budget, you will it stop it, hard stop it, or it will yes, sure. soft stop it? Is this the question? So, I mean, I want to see the. Uh, Remaining balance, remaining balance of the budget over uh, while creating the purchase order. Might we have only uh, this limit we can create right now for this uh, category? So I think he wants to see the limits, how much that he can spend. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, you are right. Oh yes. Uh, when when you try to create a PO, for example, it will give you an information that you can do or not according to your budgets and uh, how much that you have. Yes, you're right. I think there is no other report in the system that shows you that, of course, uh, that you have this much of a limit, so you can do or you cannot do that. Unfortunately. To add on it, I think. Uh, see, at the transaction level, that remain remaining part is not there, but in the actual versus budget, you will be able to see what is remaining, uh, what is the variance, and like that. Correct. But what you can do is that, for example, create a report from a uh, management reporter to see the actuals and the budgeted, budgeted, and then there is a column that shows you the difference. But if you have for, but this is only applicable that you only have posted, right? For unposted, uh, let me check what we can do from um, from uh, management reporter. Uh, if there is a PO on that one if, and not posted, will it be seen on the management reporter? But I will check and inform you with the results. Thank you. Sure. Great. Uh, Bilod, before we drop off, can we also give a insight that in the next session, what you will cover uh, okay. so that uh, people can make their mind and maybe they can do some also some R&D or maybe they can prepare their mind so that it will be helpful or it is possible. Is it possible at this moment for you? Yes, of course. Just. Let me. Can you see my screen now? Have I been able to share? OK. Yeah. Can, can you? Yeah. All right. What we will go over is that I will just show it basically. But here we have the budget control. OK, we have budget cycles and we have budget control configurations. We will go over one by one what our budget control can be done, defining parameters or budget permissions, budget funds, documents and journals, assigned budget models, defining budget control rules, selecting main accounts, uh, defining budget groups, defining messaging levels and activating budget control. We'll go over the controls and we will just try to post a couple of things from uh, the modules and see what the messages that we will have accordingly to our budgets.
like we will create a PO, we are going to create a journal and post them and uh, according to different uh, information, how we can uh, continue to our postings. Super. I think it will be a great session. In detail, we will also be able to see the uh, basic level configuration from scratch. And uh, I guess uh, you, we will show them some transaction, blocker, hard stop. So I think in the next session will be very good. Yes, it's because just, controls guess, are yeah. like the fun part, right? <laughs> you will let yeah. users do things and not let the others, if you don't like them, <laughs> to proceed. Yeah, that's true. So let's see. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Billu. Thanks. If you have no questions, then we can wrap up. We will uh, update you. Keep in touch. Uh, we will publish these videos in our Kolkata called Microsoft Dynamics Community Group. If you don't follow me, just uh, if you are even in Billu's contact, you will get to know when we publish these videos. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Ramit. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice Have weekend. Take weekend. care.